Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Jens Emil, and I'm a PhD student from Aarhus University in Denmark. And uh, this is some of the work that I've done in collaboration with my colleagues and supervisors from computer science and engineering at uh, Aarhus University. So the title of the paper is Proximic Transitions, Designing Shape-Changing Furniture for Informal Meetings. So what, we, what we've been interested in in, the, in, in the, this paper and what you uh, hear about in this talk is transitions during collaborative work in flexible offices. Um, so we found that transitions in the spatial relations between people and surfaces is a very important part of informal meetings um, and that type of collaborative work. Um, so the contribution of this paper is the notion of proximic transitions to describe uh, transitions within collaborative work and it is uh, uh, developed based on uh, iterative uh, process between empirical and design work. Um, and we outline these three aspects of proxemic transitions uh, that involve people reconfiguring in a stepwise manner uh, uh, to adapt to the spatial arrangements of uh, technology and transitioning in, in different speeds depending on the duration of the informal meetings. And furthermore, we, we found that uh, informal meetings change uh, in often changing group size and activity throughout the meetings. and this. Uh, causes radical shifts in the way that we can use space for collaboration. And we argue that shape-changing furniture has the potential to support this kind of uh, rearrangement uh, in space by shifting the spatial arrangements of uh, surfaces. So shape-changing furniture is uh, a relatively young research field, um, but some of these ideas, that are, uh, some of these potentials that I just mentioned has already been outlined by, uh, by related work. Lighting and colleagues uh, propose that shape-changing furniture can uh, adapt to a variety of uh, activities by um, remembering people's preferences, preferences and adapting uh, the shape of the furniture accordingly. Um, Takashima and colleagues uh, contribute with this uh, shape-shifting wall display that rearranges according to the spatial relationships of people. We believe there's still a potential to further explore the, the social implications of shape-changing environments and to better understand what this technology might mean for the ways that we can collaborate in the future flexible offices. So our approach was to um, address this from three different uh, efforts, uh, theory, uh, th some theoretical work, empirical work, and design work. And uh, the contribution is uh, primarily theoretical, uh, contributing with the notion of uh, proxemic transitions, but it's based on this iterative process of going between understanding uh, a characteristic of the way people conduct informal meetings and uh, thinking about design qualities of shape-changing furniture in supporting um, this practice. So let me get started on, on the first aspect, the theory. So. Um, we are inspired by the theory of proxemics, which is um, a notion put forward by Edward Hall in the 1960s. And it describes uh, how people use physical space to enact their social relationships based on distances and orientation in the, uh, in the physical world. And one of the, the very inspiring things uh, that he accounts for is how furniture and, and the built space takes part in shaping our opportunities uh, to enact our social relationships, like in a public setting, how uh, the furniture allow, allows for us to maintain our personal space around strangers. Um, and in other words, uh, you can say that there are proxemic consequences of the built environment. Um, and and this, this way of phrasing it um, has been uh, adopted by the HCI community in various ways, um, but the notion of interaction proxemics is put forward by O'Hara and colleagues, and they use exactly this argument around proxemic consequences of the built environment, saying that just uh, as other aspects of the built environment, there are proxemic consequences of interactive surfaces and mechanisms. Um, this work is, uh, was further um, explored by mentees and colleagues that uh, outline these three dimensions 
of uh, interaction proxemics that relate to control, perceptual, and Dijkse's proxemics. And that is exactly um, one of the core motivations of uh, the notion of proxemic transitions that we put forward, in that they argue that the spatial arrangements of services either inhibit or enable our abilities to control, perceive, or point to digital content as part of our uh, meetings and collaborations. So we found in, uh, in our work that uh, people actually continually rearrange in the physical space to, uh, to have better circumstances for uh, pointing to uh, and perceiving uh, digital content. So that, that is what this uh, notion of proxemic transition encompasses. It's defined as the events that involve people adapting to or reconfiguring the spatial arrangements of furniture and interactive surfaces. And this now allows us to pose the question, how might shape-changing surfaces be designed to support uh, that way of organizing in physical space? Um, so we, we, in order to get further into answering that question, we did some empirical work by studying transitions in collaborative work in a, an open office space that was very innovatively designed to support informal meetings by uh, being an open space where people could uh, easily uh, engage with their colleagues sitting just around them in these islands, as you can see, illustrated in the sketch below. Uh, we did 20, 20 hours of qualitative study where, uh, using the notation technique of snapshots, um, to capture the dynamics of informal meetings by, um, by sketching out these transitions. So you can see an arrow uh, in the sketch indicating uh, the situation moving from one spatial configuration of people and technology into another configuration. And if it's visible on the slide, uh, there, there should be like a, a striped or dotted lines. Uh, they indicate uh, dialogues between the, the people and the open space. And we generally found uh, in this empirical study that uh, informal meetings divide into three uh, types of informal meetings uh, dependent on the duration of the meeting. So quick 30 second exchanges, um, happened very frequently. Uh, ephemeral meetings were meetings that took a couple of minutes, ranging up to sustained meetings that took longer than five minutes. And each of those types of meetings have different uh, requirements. I'll get back to that. So uh, in the design work, we used these empirical examples to f reflect on how uh, we might design shape-changing furniture to support proxemic transitions. Um, by being able to rearrange the space, uh, the space for uh, collaborating. And uh, the key in, in this lens of thinking about technology is, is how that changes our ability to, uh, to collaborate and uh, reference digital information throughout uh, the, the meetings. So as you can see there uh, in the video playing right now, this is a, a transition that our piece of furniture prototype was able to, uh, to do. And um, what, what's uh, important to mention here is that this is a provisional artifact allowing us to uh, reflect on uh, the social consequences of this type of technology. And um, it's not to be, be perceived for the construction itself, but the, the concept that it allowed us to uh, explore. So in the following, I'll now outline um, the three aspects of proxemic transitions by uh, giving you empirical uh, examples and showing you how we can work with that in design of shape-changing furniture uh, around uh, this, this prototype type that you just saw. So, the first, first aspect is stepwise reconfiguration. So first I need to uh, quickly, so in the definition of proxemic transitions, we uh, distinguish between um, adapting to and reconfiguring. So adapting to the uh, spatial arrangement of technology is uh, what you can see in the top example here where uh, a, a man is adapting to, uh, uh, to his posture uh, according to his colleague and, and the displayed content. Uh, they might also do reconfigurations which is uh, reconfiguring uh, the furniture and dis display uh, configurations. So uh, they had height adjustable tables that they used uh, sometimes to rearrange uh, to have sustained meetings, or they had uh, 
orange guest chairs that they could uh, bring over um, to temporarily um, uh, situate themselves um, around these personal workstation to, to conduct uh, sustained meetings. This is the typical behavior for uh, sustained informal meetings. And the design aspect is that in these types of meetings, people temporarily adapt to or reconfigure furniture and displays in a stepwise manner. So what you can't see from these uh, images here is that if you look at this over a longer time, uh, this, this is a continu continuous activity that happens where people rearrange uh, their, their formations and also uh, the furniture and the displays in order to, um, to engage with each other in dialogues. And to design for this kind of um, stepwise uh, phenomenon, we, uh, we, we propose that shape change should al allow for uh, multiple meaningful steps between its end configurations. And that you can see in this uh, prototype's ability to transition between a wall display and uh, a tabletop configuration and uh, steps in between. So what this now allows uh, people to do um, is to have a meeting where you can reorganize the, uh, the shape of the canvas of the content uh, that you have. And, and this allows you to, um, to have uh, different properties for, for discussing the content in terms of the ability to control it. So right now you can see that both can, can at an arm's reach uh, control the digital display. And now, as they rearrange, it's a different side-by-side -side configuration with different uh, possibilities for, for, um, for discussing the content. Um, transition speed is another design aspect that we found. And this relates to um, the, the speeds with, with, with which they transitioned, uh, uh, and, and that was uh, defined by the duration of the meeting. So in the, in the quick exchanges, um, you would see these quick kind of uh, movement transitions, um, allowing you to shortly engage and then move back to your uh, personal workstation. So that's one example we, we saw. In, in the sustained meetings, um, it, would, it, it could be in, uh, in the case you see to the right, where the dialogue would initiate across uh, people's screen configurations, and then uh, as they got more into the discussion, they would rearrange around the same displayed content to have more easy access, visual access to the same displayed content, be able to reference to that throughout the discussion. And the interesting design aspect here, if you think about that in terms of shape-changing furniture, is that some exchanges involve quick transitions while transforming physical shape of furniture is relatively slow. And, uh, and it's slow for good reasons, because we don't want our furniture to uh, do explosive transitions where coffee cups fly everywhere around. Um, so so, so what, how we've come to think about that in terms of design is that we should design for a variety in speed of people's transitions by utilizing the complementary um, the qualities of the physical and the digital. So as you see right here, just rearranging the digital content during uh, a conversation is, it, is also changing the uh, ability to organize in the space. And when the meetings are taking longer, uh, you still have that possibility of actually repurposing uh, the space. Radical shifts um, is, is our final um, design aspect. And this refers to more radical shifts in, in the use of space. Um, and that occurs uh, typically when uh, the group size changes during the meeting. So as you can see here, organizing around one display configuration now is still the same. However, there, there are three people, and it's hard for everyone to equally uh, point and reference uh, the display content. We, we would see them migrate their activity to, uh, to different parts of the physical space and utilizing the flexibility of that space to, uh, to, to organize according to these kind of uh, radical shifts in, in the meeting activity. Um, and the sign aspect here is that 
Meeting spaces need flexibility in accommodating for a variety of activities and, and group sizes. And you can definitely say that the, the, the place we studied had done a good job in doing that. However, with shape-changing furniture, we now have different opportunities for enacting that kind of collaboration. Um, because we can now rescale and reorient the displayed content around the same form factor. And, this, uh, and these changes can now make the same kind of radical shifts in uh, interaction proxemics around uh, the surface. So as you see here, two people are in a discussion and a third one enters and the nature of the activity now changes into presentation because the two people there are presenting their, their work to the third person and now she can bring in her digital content also and this might uh, transition into a discussion again where they're comparing each of their contributions to the discussion and they uh, then can reconfigure the space for doing that kind of collaboration now with everyone equal access to the uh, display configuration and everyone can control and uh, use the, the space for referencing uh, during the discussion. Good, so to summarize, um, we, have put, we put forward this notion of proxemic transitions which is developed based on iterations of empirical and uh, design work. And I'll just quickly iterate, reiterate on uh, what they mean. Um, we found that people reconfigure in a stepwise manner and we can design for that by having multiple meaningful steps between the end configurations of a shape change. Uh, we found that people transition in, in different speeds depending on the duration of the meeting and uh, we can use the complementary qualities of physical and dig digital to accommodate for these differences. And finally, radical shifts uh, in group sizes and activity throughout the informal meeting can be um, um, designed for in how we can rescale and reorient the physical uh, shape of the canvas during, uh, during a discussion of specific content. So yeah, that concludes my talk with the takeaway message that proxemic transitions are a frequent and important part of the way people collaborate and conduct informal meetings, and shape-changing furniture can offer new opportunities for supporting this kind of uh, informal me meeting activity. And uh, with that, I will quickly just uh, mention a, a few things we can look, uh, we believe our work has outlined for the future is that the natural next steps would be, of course, to do some situated evaluations of these ideas around proxemic transitions and shape-changing furniture. Um, and, and, of course, we would also need, in order to do that, to go more into detail about the discussion of, about how people might interact uh, with this type of furniture. What are the interaction techniques uh, that, that make sense for, for this kind of practice. And we believe that in order to study that, it's important to bring in the, the actual people for which we wanna, uh, we wanna uh, support with this uh, technology. Um, and yeah, that, that concludes my talk. Thank you. Um, all right, hi. I'm Philip from University of Paris Clay. Uh, what a great Philip. talk and what a wonderful example of a sort of integrative um, design and theory uh, study. Um, I guess I just want to ask about um, some different uh, design qualities that you might have investigated or reflected on. Um, I guess it's related to the radical transitions one, but I was thinking about the ability to, say, combine modules, push two tables together, which is a very common strategy, um, I guess, in my experience of Proxemic, uh, proxemics and meetings. Um, so I was wondering if you had done any design explorations or reflections on combining and extending furniture. Very, very good question. Thanks. Yeah, we in our initial explorations, we actually had two uh, different pieces of furniture that we were able to rotate, and we explored uh, with the ability to kind of reorganize those as uh, individual parts, uh, and then finally came up with with a single uh, design. But uh, of course, this would be like super interesting to start exploring how a whole ecology of interior elements that are able to transition would work together. Uh, but I think at, at this scale that we're working at here, one of the main challenges is, is building these kinds of prototypes. Uh, it really surprised me uh, as a new PhD to, student to see how long time these kind of things take. And uh, we actually, by serendipity, had a carpenter in our lab 
uh, who, who's Henrik, uh, who's the second author of this paper, and I was really glad that he had some skills in, in terms of doing this, this more physical, large-scale prototyping. Um, but yeah, great, great point. Let's thank our speakers. I hope you enjoy the rest of Kai.